Welcome to Biology with Deepika and in this video we will learn about the sexual reproduction in angiosperms. This video will be helpful for class 12 biology students and BSc botany students. So let's see how the sexual reproduction take place in angiosperms or the flowering plants. Here is the structure of the flower, flower showing the reproductive organs of a flower and the reproductive organs. This is the anther with the pollen grains. This is the anther with the pollen grains. And this is the female reproductive part of the flower. This is the ov ovary. This is the ovule. And this is the style. These all take part in directly take part in the sexual reproduction in angiosperms or the flowering plants. Then the, we will see the term, what is the term embryology means. The process of sexual reproduction and the related events in the life history of an organism is known as embryology. So the study of the embryology means study and the embryo is known as the embryology. The study of the embryo is known as embryology. The credit for laying the foundation of plant embryology in India goes to Professor P. Maheshwari of Delhi University. Embryology includes the study of following processes. First, structure and development of reproductive organs. Second, the gamete formation. Third, the fertilization. Fourth, embryo development. And the fifth and the last one is the formation of a new plant. So, we will see how all this process take place. The First, we will go see the parts of a flower. This is the calyx. This green part is known as the calyx or the sepal. And this colored part is known as the corolla or the petal. These two parts only help in the process of sexual reproduction but do not directly take, plus, take part in the process. But the androsium and gynosium takes directly in the process of sexual reproduction in flowering plants or angiosperms. The androsium is the male reproductive hole and consists of stamens. Each stamen is made up of filament and anther. Here is the filament. This stalk is known as the filament and this is the anther. And the uh, female reproductive hole is known as gynosium and it is made up of ovary, style and stigma. Here is the stigma. Here is the style and this is the ovary. This is the female reproductive hole and this is the male reproductive hole. These two parts directly involved in the process of sexual reproduction in angiosperms. So the process of sexual reproduction in angiosperms take place with the following processes. First is the microsporogenesis which means that microspore mother cell give rise to four haploid microspores. Genesis means generation and here is the generation of microspore is taking place. So the term is known as microsporogenesis. Then the next term is microgametogenesis. In this process, male gamete is formed from microspore. In this video, we will learn these two processes and in my later videos, I will show the rest of the processes. The third more process is known as pollination. Pollination is transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma. The megasporogenesis then take place in which megaspore mother cells is formed from archisporeal initial. Then the megagametogenesis take place in which female gamete is formed from the megaspore. Then the fertilization occurs means the fusion of nuclei of male and female gametes and the embryogeny process take place later with the development of the mature embryo from the zygote. In then the endosperm formation occurs at the last which means by triple fusion primary endosperm nucleus is formed. This is a special feature in the angiosperms that endosperm is formed by triple fusion. Now we will see the structure of anther. The anther structure consists of two parts the wall of the anther and the pollen chamber. The wall of the anther consists of the epidermis, the endothesium, the middle layers and the tapetum. And then the pollen chamber is there. This is the pollen chamber. The wall of the anther consists of epidermis. Now we will see in details the wall anther structure. The outer lining single layer is known as epidermis. And it is one cell is one cell in thickness. The second layer next to the 
epidermis is known as endothelium this is the single layer and these are radially elongated cells here we see how the cells are radially elongated and single layered and this is characterized by fibrous thickenings which help in the dehiscence of anther stromium or thin wall cells are also present in endothelium these are the stromium or thin wall cells these are present in endothelium layer this is a special characteristic of the anther the middle layer then the next three to four layers these are the next three to four layers below the endothelium is known as the middle layer in mature anther these degenerate and disintegrate next to the middle layer is known as the tapetum this is the tapetum the these cells are multinucleated here we see how the cells are multinucleated and this provide nutrition to the developing microspores tapetum secrete both enzymes and hormones and tapetum is of two types secretory or glandular tapetum which remain in contact with the tapetum throughout and on the other hand amoeboid or plasmodial tapetum separates from the wall and moves freely in the pollen chamber so this tapetum is important because it provide nutrition to the developing microspores then the pollen chamber the central cavity of the anther lobe is known as the pollen chamber this is the central cavity of the anther lobe and it, this is known as the pollen chamber and microsporogenesis takes place in this region so this is all about the structure of the anther then we will move on to the development of anther in the development of anther the young anther with a group of parenchyma cells is surrounded by epidermis here we see the epidermis layer outer layer and it is it has group of parenchyma cells in between then the four lobed hypodermal cells act as archesporial initials here the these are the four lobed archesporial cells hypodermal cells act as the archesporial initials then it will divide into the archesporial initial will divide into an outer primary parietal cell and an inner primary sporogenous cell here we see the epidermis below this layer this archesporial initial will divide into a outer layer of primary parietal cell and the inner layer of primary sporogenous cell then the primary parietal cell divides to form three to five layers of endothelium middle layer and tapetum and the primary sporogenous cell divides to produce a mass of sporogenous cells or microsporocytes here we see this is the epidermis outer layer then this period primary parietal cell which is next to the uh, epidermis divides into endothelium this is a correction this is not endothelium this is endothelium this endothelium and these are the middle layers three to four layers and this is the tapetum this primary parietal cell divides into these three layers then the primary sporogenous cell which is next to the primary parietal cell here divide into a microsporocytes or mass of sporogenous cell or sporocyte microsporocytes this sporogenous cells undergoes further mitotic divisions with the growth of anther this derivatives function as microspore mother cell here see how microspore mother cell is formed by mitotic division of the spore microsporocytes then the microsporogenesis occurs in this process each microspore mother cell divides meiotically to form four haploid microspores the microspore mother cell divides meiotically to form four haploid microspores by meiosis this remain in tetrads here we see how this remain in tetrads the arrangement of pollen grains in the tetrad is affected by cytokinesis during meiosis and it is of two types first is the simultaneous type in which the cytokinesis occurs only at the end of meiosis 2 here we see how the, at the end of meiosis 2 and the resultant tetrad shows tetrahedral arrangement and it is common in dicots on the other hand the successive type the meiosis takes place twice cytokinesis takes place twice first at the end of meiosis 1 forming two cells and then at the end of meiosis 2 to form four cells again cytokinesis form four cells and it shows isobilateral arrangement and it is common in monocots the most common type of uh, tetrad formation is the tetrahedral type 
then the microspore or the pollen grain is formed Micro the first cell of microspore is the first cell of male gametophyte it is unicellular and haploid where shape varies from oval to polyhedral and the wall of the pollen grain or the microspore is made up of two layers the outer exine layer this is the outer exine layer it is thick and ornamented here we see how it is thick and ornamented at some places exine is thin to form germ pore at some places it is thin to form a germ pore the exine is made up of a substance known as sporopollenin this is very important the exine has a substance sporopollenin and it is biologically the most resistant substance and hence pollen grains are the most preserved structures the inner entine layer this is the inner entine layer it is thin and uniform it is made up of pectocellulose at the time of germination entine comes out of the germ pores in the form of a pollen tube this entine comes out of the germ pore this is the germ pore like and comes out as a pollen tube the entine comes out as a pollen tube uh, in insects pollinated flowers the exine of the pollen grain is covered with a yellowish viscous and sticky substance called pollen kit this is important um, in insect pollinated flowers the exine of the pollen grain is covered with a yellowish viscous and sticky substance called pollen kit this is perhaps the protective envelope which also sticks to the body of the insect and thus helps in pollination the size and form of pollen grains and ornamentation of exine are characteristic of a plant these are of great taxonomic value and hence helps in the identifying the species various characters of pollen grains are studied under the special branch known as palynology here we see how the microgametogenesis takes place means the pollen grain or the microspore give rise to male gametophyte with various divisions the nucleus of the pollen grain this is the nucleus of the pollen grain it divides meiotically to form the vegetative nucleus the tube nucleus or and the generative nucleus again the generative this is the two cell stage sometimes the pollen grain are shed at this two cell stage but at some other time further division takes place and this and generative cell further divides into a large vegetative cell and a small lenticular generative cell this large vegetative cell this is the large vegetative cell and this is the small generative lenticular lenticular generative cell now this is at the two cell stage the two male gam the generative cell then gives rise to two male gametes so this is the vegetative cell and this generative cell further divides to give rise to two vegetative two male gametes so now this is the three cell stage here the male gametes is formed so the pollen grains may be discharged from the anther at two cell stage or at three cell cells just now i mentioned in most plants the three cell condition is formed after pollen grain is shed the liberated pollen grain germinates on the stigma and produces a pollen tube the generative cell divides inside the pollen tube to form two male gametes so this is all about the anther microsporogenesis and micro megagametogenesis and this is all about um, today's video thank you for watching and please share and comment to my video and like my video if you like it and stay tuned for my upcoming videos thank you so much for watching